Well, welcome to another Wednesday night edition of Virtual Tasting of the Featured Effin Beer of the Week. This week we've got a pretty unique beer that we're going to be tasting and uh, pretty excited to try it. It's called our Blackberry Bitter. And we'll go over the ingredients, the recipe, the brewing day, and how we did it. And we'll taste it because uh, this little glass here is Bitter Beaver, and this one over here is Blackberry Bitter. So we'll give you a comparison on those two. It's going to be a lot of fun. So if you're going to make notes, get your pen and paper. If you're a home brewer and want to try something like this at home, or just want to observe it and drink with your beer of choice or beverage of choice and enjoy this, or um, just watch for entertainment. Whatever it is, enjoy it the way you want to enjoy it. So first of all, uh, the base beer is the Bitter Beaver. It's our English bitter. It's the number one beer we ever brewed commercially in January 23rd of 2010. Same recipe, been brewed the same way all, all along. It's a 15 and a half gallon batch or a half barrel batch. And our, terminal gra our uh, original gravity is 1.038 and our terminal gravity is 1.014. And it's 3.4% alcohol and 34 IBUs. What are the ingredients in it? Well, we use three ingredients. They all uh, they come from crisp Maris Otter is our base malt, and it's uh, floor malted uh, Maris Otter comes from England. 18 pounds or 89% of our malt bill. And then we've got one and a half pounds of crisp Crystal 77 Crystal Malt, and that's 7% uh, of our malt bill. And then we add uh, some Belgian biscuit from the Castle uh, Malting Company, and three quarters of a pound or four percent of the malt bill. That's it. We mash it in 154 degrees with a modified water of London water and it's for 60 minutes mash in. We sparge it out with 170 degree water and collect all the wort in the boil kettle and we boil it for 60 minutes. Once we hit the start of the boil we had our first hop addition and we put in uh, four ounces of UK Fuggles, which gives us 23.6 IBUs. And then at 30 minutes, we add uh, one and a half ounces of Willamette hops. These are all pellets. And one and a half ounces of UK, um, UK Fuggles. And combined, that's going to give us uh, about nine IBUs. And then we get it uh, flame out. We add a Another little addition of UK gold into two ounces, and it gives us about a one IBU. So that is uh, the malt bill. That's the hopping strategy. And then we transfer it to our fermenter uh, with our WLP002, which is the Fuller's G strain. And we move it in there at 65 degrees, let it rise to 68 over a seven day period. And then we pull it out of the fermenter. Secondary ferment for seven days at 32 degrees. And then we keg it and we force carbonate to one and a half volumes, which is about half of what your traditional um, West Coast uh, or Northwest uh, craft beer is going to be much more in tune with what the English beer carbonation levels are. So that's what we've got. So this is uh, the color on the English bitter, Bitter Beavers 8.7. And let's see if I can show you better. We're not outside, so the color's a little harder to see. That's 8.7 on the uh, SRM color schedule. And this, this one I'm estimating will be closer to about 11 or 12. And it's got the blackberries in there. So it's a little darker uh, and it's also a little hazier. So let's taste the bit of beaver first. Let's smell, well, let's smell them both. Well, <clears throat> let, me, let me back up. So <clears throat> when we go to our, so this is a 15 and a half um, gallon batch we split it into three 5.16 gallon batches in uh, the inner secondary and one of them is straight bit of beaver so this is off the same boil is is this beer and then on this one uh, we have two of the 5.16 gallon batch uh, batches in secondary that we added two pounds of blackberries now the blackberries um, we picked them off of the our our blackberries here right here at the brewery, and we froze them for about three weeks. We thawed them the night before we were going to brew, and so then that freezing killed any bacteria that were going to be on those uh, 
instead of boiling them and pasteurizing them, we decided to freeze out all the bacterias. So we froze it, we thawed it out, and we added the full berries into the secondary. And we put two pounds in each of the uh, 5.16 gallon um, containers for our secondary at 32 degrees for seven days. So that kind of explains that. So a bit of beaver, it's got just a nice, sweet, uh, malty tone to it. Beautiful, biscuity, toasty. And then we go to this blackberry bitter. I'm getting some of the same uh, biscuity, toasty, but I'm, I am getting a quite a blackberry effervescence and it's got a nice blackberry smell. Um, not overpowering, but it's a great compliment to it. So it's almost like you're gonna have blackberry jam on a, on a, uh, on a biscuit. That's what it looks like to me is going to be happening here. Let's taste the uh, the uh, bit of beaver. Bready, toasty, biscuity, delicious, upfront sweetness, um, great mouthfeel to it. It's 3.4 percent alcohol. Don't have any heat for the alcohol tones. Finishes nice, dry bitterness. Um, uh, not not bitter, but a nice dryness to it. This is pleasing in every way. This is everyday beer, uh, just delicious, and it's at uh, um, you could drink this all day long. Three point four. Delicious in every single way. Now we've got this one, blackberries. I just love that little uh, smell of the blackberries on there, and these were. You know, these were freshly picked and then frozen immediately for three weeks. Thawed out the day before, the night before, and added it in secondary. Subtle, but enough blackberry flavor to really taste the blackberry. Not overpowering. It's not overly. It's not overly sweet at all. Um, it's like having a, a little bit of blackberry jam on a toasted biscuit. You get still get that biscuity, toasty flavors in it, but uh, you've got. I think maybe okay. you're getting more blackberry aroma, which gives you that blackberry flavor, than you really are tasting. But uh, it's enough of it where you really are saying, "I get the blackberry on it." Um, but you're not saying, oh, yuck, it's too blackberry. It's not at all. It's, it's a perfect balance. And I wouldn't add any more because it's a light beer. It's a very delicate beer. And I think putting two pounds is probably appropriate. I think if you put more, it would become overly blackberryish and probably um, too much to handle for this beer. It would change the beer. It wouldn't have the beer in context like it is. This really is bit of beaver with the compliment of having that um, nice touch of blackberry tones to it. It really is good. I didn't know how it was gonna turn out because we've never done anything with our beaver on playing with it. I'm gonna move this a little closer so we can get some questions here. Um, just fantastic, really is. So we've got, uh, who we got Kathy, Scott, Sally, Kim, Bob, Cindy, Dave, John, Zach, howdy Zach, um, and another Scott, we have Lee, we have um, Letter, we have Shelly, Zach says this is the beer I'm most excited to try this month, and I don't think this is going to disappoint you, if anyone likes Bit of Beaver, if you've had it and you enjoy it, you're going to love this beer, if anyone likes a little, um, the, the flavor of blackberry, um, you're going to love this beer. Um, Aaron's here, Stephanie and Chris are watching, and Zach says, any more tartness to the taste with the blackberries? I wouldn't say it's tart. Um, you know, blackberries, if you pick them when they're, um, so I try to pick the blackberries when they're not really firm blackberries. I like to pick them when they're very, very soft. That means the sugar is at the highest level on it, and that's really the way these were all selected. I wanted blackberry sweetness into it. And so that's what we did. If you pick them when they're a little firm, you get a little more of that tartness to it. So um, you could pick them 
as a more firm berry and you would get more of a tart blackberry flavor than you do, um, we're getting here. Uh, we just have uh, Jennifer, welcome. Zach says, is it sweeter at all with the addition of the blackberries? I uh, Let's see, let me try again. Maybe a touch, maybe just a little bit more sweet up front, but still has that nice dry finish to it. Um, but it's not, it's, it's subtly more sweet. It's that blackberry flavor without being overly on the sweet side. So um, it's it's really, really good. And I, you know, doing some research on adding blackberries to beer, since blackberries are um, not the most overpowering flavor, uh, they're, they're full of so much water, you know, they're very much liquid. And they were recommending that you probably need five pounds for five gallons. And boy, I'll tell you, I put in less than half of that. And I think it would have been way too much if we would have approached that close. Welcome, Wade, who's watching now. Uh, any differences in mouthfeel because of the haziness? No, it's got that same nice, um, smooth, uh, um, you know, moderate body to it. It's not any different in the mouthfeel at all. It's the same mouthfeel. Um, and same tones running through it with just that addition of that nice little lightly sweetened blackberry flavor and essence. When you have such a great bill like you do with the bit of beaver, here's a question I'm trying to read here, if I can read more of it. Um, <laughs> how do you deal with adding a wild card ingredient to the bl like blackberries? How do you know enough is enough? Well, Chris, you don't, and that's the gamble with doing something like this because beaver is so dialed in, and it's a very predictable beer, and I've got uh, lots of customers who that's their go-to beer. It's also my go-to beer, and you don't want to ruin that beer. And so, um, you know, when you take that as a base beer and you start adding things, you've got to be really careful because you could really ruin the integrity of it. And um, that's why I really dialed back, and I, I'd rather go on the low end than the high end of of a additional flavor to something like this and so two pounds was less than half really the recommended that I was getting from research with pro pro brewers so uh, um, it's kind of trial and error and I think I, I, I really went on the right side of it uh, Bob says does the sweetness add any alcohol no because the fermentation is done and we put it in it you know when it was at 32 degrees so it's too cold to do any more fermentation if I would have added it into primary fermentation, I think here's where the result would have been. would have got a little more alcohol out of it. But also, I think a lot of that uh, sugar would have uh, turned into alcohol, and it would have dried the beer out a little bit, and I wouldn't have the, the blackberry essence. And that's why I wanted to add it afterwards when it was done fermenting, if that makes any sense. Uh, any other fruit experiments in your beers on your mind? Well, we always do the cranberry frost, which uh, tr traditionally comes out on Thanksgiving, and we put in dried cranberries into a golden strong ale, and I think people know about that. Mm -hmm. And we typically also do our butcher's brew, which is not a fruit, but we put in uh, uh, fresh roasted hazelnuts into the brown ale. We have done a blackberry uh, cream ale in the past, and we've also done a um, uh, huckleberry cream ale, and those are really the only other fruit-flavored beers that we've done up to this point. So I wish we would have. We had a big uh, huck, um, blackberry harvest this year, and ate a lot of them. And uh, wish I would have gotten more so we could maybe experiment with a. Maybe we could do a blackberry. Uh, porter or blackberry stout or something that would have been kind of fun too but i think then you need to put in maybe a lot more you have to put in that five or six pounds per five gallons to get that because you're dealing with all the other robust flavors on it this being a delicate beer you're going to be really careful on what you add to it and how much you add to it uh, welcome roxanne so we've got a lot of people coming and going and interested in this beer this is a beer that's going to get a lot of interest um, we only have left i think 15 growlers we've had some pre-orders already and um, it's going to go fast. So uh, out of a total of 20, I think we're down to 15 already. We, we start serving this on Friday and Saturday, curbside pickup, 4 to 5 p.m. How do you get it? You go to the FoggyNogginBrewing.com website, hit the beer tab. All the details are there. What you end up doing is emailing us, FoggyNogginBrewing at Comcast.net, what you want. We send you an invoice. You pay for it, and you drive up between 4 and 5 
Friday or Saturday. Just let us know which day you want to pick it up, and it'll be ready for you, and we'll either put it in your trunk, your back seat, or hand it to you, whatever you're comfortable with, and uh, make this a good experience. The only caveat is it needs to be in a Foggy Noggin logoed growler, and if you don't have one, we have them for sale. Just let me know, and we'll add it to your invoice. If you do have one, you just swap it out. Give me your yours, and I'll give you a freshly cleaned and freshly filled one. So that's how it works. So let's... Um, uh, Zach says, how about adding dried dates that I put in the uh, our barley one called duck's ass? Um, yeah, I think that could work as well. Um, and uh, I love that. So we're going to be doing duck's ass here pretty soon because it's uh, it's a winter beer we, we do and we release it in January. But uh, that's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah. And then uh, Zach also says we have the coconuts, uh, coconut porter, not stout, next week. And so that was... Uh, just pulled out of the fermenter today, and it was put into secondary, and we added the uh, coconut into the uh, imperial porter, and that's going to be great. That's next. That's that's not next week's. That's uh, end of the month. We have uh, Vienna Lager next week. So let's let's uh, go over the recipe again real quick because this is a bit of beaver as the base beer, and uh, there's three malts. It's crisp Maris Otter, and that's our main malt. It's uh, 89 percent of the malt bill, or 18 pounds for a 15 and a half gallon batch, and then we have. Uh, one and a half pounds of Crystal 77 from Crisp, which is a crystal malt. And then we have uh, three quarters of a pound of Castle Biscuit, which is comes from Belgium, and it's 4% of the malt bill. Uh, we use London water, and we mashed it at 154 degrees for 60 minutes. And then we sparge it out with 170 degree water, and we catch all the sugar in our boil kettle, boil it for 60 minutes, and we have a couple of hop additions. At 60 minutes, we add some UK Fuggles, and we're putting in uh, four ounces. It gives us about 23 and a half uh, IBUs. At 30 minutes, we're adding um, one and a half ounces each of UK Fuggles and Willamette hops, and it's giving us about nine IBUs. And then finally, at uh, Flame Out, we're putting uh, two ounces of UK Goldings, and that gives us about one more IBU. We transfer it into our fermenter with using White Lab 002 yeast, which is the fuller yeast strain. And it's uh, connected into the fermenter at uh, 30, uh, 50, 65 degrees, and we let it rise to 68 for one week, seven days. We pull it out. Now, here's when we split into three different beers. Uh, we put our base beer, um, control beer, Bit of Beaver, into one of the 5.16 gallon kegs. And then we took the other and we put it in, this into two other vessels, same size, and we added two pounds of blackberries. And I really recommend you either, um, you're either going to boil them and pasteurize them or you're going to freeze them to kill any bacteria. And we chose to freeze them to keep them whole and we could put it in there and... Um, I think that was the right thing to do. I really like the essence you got out of it. So that was for another week at 32 degrees, and then we put it into kegs and forced carbonate to one and a half uh, volumes of CO2 pressure, which gives us a perfect English balanced uh, carbonation level. You get a little bit more color out of this. It's a little more hazy too, with all that blackberry, because, uh, and then this is the bit of beaver. So um, still, it's uh, they're very similar in color. Uh, Bit of Beaver's got a nice malty um, flavor to it. It smells like uh, biscuits and toast, um, lightly uh, toasted biscuits or bread, and it uh, has a nice dry finish to it. 3.4% alcohol and 34 IBUs. This has got the same beautiful character of the lightly toasted biscuit or bread, but it's got like you've got a little bit of... Um, blackberry preserves or jam on, on it, and it's, uh, it's really, really good. Delicate, full flavor, uh, perfect balance, harmony of uh, just enough blackberry to make it really, really interesting. Um, thanks, Zach. I think it is a great uh, month for F and beers, and blackberry Civil War yet. I don't think I would do it. I think you would lose the flavor of the blackberry. I would enjoy it the way it is. I think this is a non-blending beer. I think it's one. Just let's enjoy it the way it is. Uh, Chris, there's no dumb questions, but you say, uh, what exactly is London water? You meant... 
mentioned it in the bill. Yeah, so for us, we so all of our uh, water here in Bothell comes from the Alderwood Water District, and it's uh, not too far different from London Water. Uh, they have a lot of limestone in their um, water sources, and so uh, after we charcoal filter the chlorine out, we're adding gypsum to our water to get it to match the, the London Water profile, which softens it up just a little bit, a little bit softer. Welcome, Karen. And Zach says, what other of your beers have London water in? Well, that's, we started off with, I mean, so Christmas Duck, Bit of Beaver, um, they all have London water. Um, Butch's Brew. Um, boy, a lot of them. Uh, Maddie's Mild. Um, that's our most common water we use. Uh, the uh, our in, uh, in anniversary ales, uh, those are all um, London waters, and so that we, we we use that more than we use um, anything else. Like Big Chief, uh, those are all London waters. It's a delicious beer. So this is sixteen dollars for a sixty-four ounce or a half gallon um, growler. Friday, Saturday, curbside pickup, four to five p.m. Um, you get the beer from. Um, ordering online and we send you an invoice and then we will uh, curbside deliver it to you um, when you drive up four to five Friday and Saturday um, got our growler we swap it out if you don't um, we'll sell you one of those as well just let us know and let us know which day you want to pick it up because we'll have it all coded for you and all ready for you so we make your your trip here quick and easy you can add things to your order too. You, you, we have eight beers that you will find that are on growler fills, and we have uh, lots of bottles. We have our anniversary ale, we have our Burton uh, Burton ale, Waski, we have our house ale. We have a couple of bottles left of batch 28. Um, 29 was just released a few weeks ago. We have Big Chief, and we have um, Cease and Desist uh, Skittles IPA, and with the Hawks on a bye week. Um, It'll probably not be the, the beer of demand, but, you know, um, it's good anytime. It's a great IPA, and you may want to get some as well. Um, or get some now so you have it for the next weekend for the Seahawks because we, we usually sell out every weekend. And then we've got uh, Anniversary Ale. We have a lot of different years of it. If you look on there, there's a bunch of vintages, and it's really fun to try different vintages of, uh, of our Anniversary Ale. So lots of things you can have, uh, uh, lots of things to experiment with. And Craig, welcome, and Chip, welcome. Um, a lot of a lot of people joining us tonight. I think this uh, blackberry has been a um, blackberry bitter is a is very interesting to people. And let's taste it one more time. So this is the bitter beaver, which is the base beer of the blackberry bitter. Nice, toasty, biscuity um, flavor. A little upfront sweetness. Finishes with a nice dry uh, dryness to it. Um, Three point four percent alcohol and thirty four IBUs. The blackberry bitter, same base beer with the addition of two pounds per five gallons in, of uh, of the beer of fresh blackberries. Nice, subtle blackberry aroma, along with that biscuity toasty um, aroma. It's the perfect harmony. I'd say it's a, um, a maybe it's a English crumpet warmed up with a little bit of blackberry preserve on it. That's the best way to say it. You really got to try it. Um, you got to get it. I don't know if it's going to make it past this weekend. I think we're going to have enough demand for that. So if you want it, you got to get it this weekend. Craig says this sounds really good. I must a must try. I agree. I think this is something you're going to really want to try. Zach says blackberry delicious. Yeah. Craig says it's perfect for the fall and food pairing. Well, I would go with something very light because you don't want to overpower the beer. Just with the beaver, I always think uh, beaver is beaver goes really with anything uh, food wise. But I would say some light things. Uh, if you're going to eat a meal, maybe chicken or fish. I wouldn't go with red meats. I wouldn't go with uh, barbecue. I wouldn't go with Italian food or Mexican food, nothing spicy. Um, but uh, you could go with uh, cheeses and crackers. and um, Those good with, go good with a lot of things. Or nuts, pretzels. Yeah. 
scones with butter and blackberry jam. Yep, that's where you go. Maybe you should have that. Maybe it'd be the perfect breakfast beer for the weekend. You know, pick up a couple of growlers and, and have a Sunday brunch with uh, some English scones with um, butter melted on them, some blackberry jam, and some of this blackberry bitter. That would be a really good. That's what I would do. So tomorrow night we're do, going to be having a uh, um, our happy half hour at 5.30. So make sure you tune in to, to uh, our Facebook page and you can get connected to that. And then uh, next uh, Wednesday we're going to be doing a virtual tasting of our Vienna Lager. And that's always a popular beer. And perfect for the fall season and the end of uh, Oktoberfest. It, uh, it really kind of fits in with all that. And... Uh, the following week is our double coconut duck. Well, that'll be really good. Imperial Porter with coconut. Um, it's going to be a fantastic beer. And uh, curbside pickup this Friday and Saturday, 4 to 5 p.m. So you go to where you know where to go, foggynogginbrewing.com. Hit the beer tab. All the details are there, and that's where you know what is available. That's how you know what to order. Send us an email. We send you an invoice, you pay for it, and boom, it's ready for you. You drive up and you drive away. It's it's really quick. It's painless, easy, and uh, you'll 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 be fine. And then you'll be set for the weekend. So get your growler fills, get your bottles, and you can get merchandise. You can get a bog and noggin hats, you can get shirts, pint glasses, because our beer tastes best in a proper English pint. So this is a uh, these are available as well, and you'll see them on that uh, same page. The uh, the beer tab's got listed everything that's available for sale. Appreciate all your comments. Uh, a lot of interaction tonight, and that was a lot of fun. And um, I'm going to let you guys go. I'm going to archive this on our Facebook page so you can watch it again. And look forward to seeing you guys this weekend, and hopefully we'll see you uh, enjoying our happy half hour tomorrow night. Cheers, everyone. Stay safe.